Oh, hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Story Makers. How many of you know what this is? It's a puzzle called a Rubik's Cube. And I'm still trying to figure it out. Luckily, I know who can teach us more about it. My guest today on Story Makers, Kerry Aradia, author of Erno Rubik and His Magic Cube. Welcome, Kerry. Hi, Rocco. It's so good to be here. So the Rubik's Cube has been around for a long time. Isn't that right? Yes, Rocco, it has been. In fact, the Rubik's Cube was created the same year I was born, which was a long time ago. Erno Rubik and his Magic Cube is a story about how the Rubik's Cube was created. Erno was a very curious little boy who loved books and art and nature and most of all, puzzles, especially puzzles that had shapes in them. When he grew up, he became a teacher and he was still really curious. He wanted to teach his students about three-dimensional objects and how they move. And the cube is a three-dimensional object or shape. So Erno wondered if he could make a big cube out of lots of little cubes that moved around each other and twisted and turned without breaking. So he came up with this cube that eventually became known as the Rubik's Cube Puzzle. Do you know how to solve this puzzle? Oh, Rocco, I wish I did. I don't know how to solve it, but I still love playing with it. I love moving all the little cubes around and looking at the colors go by. It's so much fun. So how did you become interested in the Rubik's Cube? When I was a kid, I tried solving the Rubik's Cube, but I wasn't very good at it. And my older brother used to take the whole cube apart and put all the little cubes back together in the right order. And then he went around telling everybody he was better at solving it than I was. That was sneaky. Right? I think so too. Well, the Rubik's Cube became the most popular puzzle in the world. And when I grew up, I wondered who created it and how. I started reading all about it and it was so interesting that I decided to write a picture book. And I just hope that other people would find the story as interesting as I did. So in the book, we learn that Rubik used paper clips, rubber bands, and fishing line to make the cube move around. He experimented with how many cubes to use, how many small cubes to use, and he experimented with how to hold the cubes together. And first he decided to use eight cubes and he used paper clips and rubber bands and fishing lines like Rocco showed us and the cube kept falling apart. So then he had to decide what to do and he thought he would use even more cubes. So he did and then he thought and thought about it some more and figured out that he could take the center cube out of the big cube and if he took a small round ball and put it in the center instead, little cubes could all attach to it and move around the ball smoothly. Well, that was inventive. You know, the book was illustrated by Kara Kramer and I'm sure you have a favorite illustration. Well, Kara Kramer is a great artist and I'm so happy she illustrated this book. I love so many images in the book, but I'd have to say some of my favorites are the ones when Erno was a little boy and he was learning about geometric shapes by playing with puzzles like tangrams, pentominoes, and pentacubes. Can you tell us more about those puzzles? When you play with the tangram, you get to move all seven of the geometric shapes around and see what kind of designs you can come up with. For example, you might want to form a letter of the alphabet, or maybe you want to make an animal like a turtle or a cat. A pentomino is a shape made out of five squares. All five squares are the same size and they're connected to each other at their edges. And there's lots of different ways to connect them at their edges, so not all pentominoes look the same. It's fun to take a lot of pentominoes and see what kind of ways you can fit them together. And also if you can fit them together to make other new and interesting shapes. The last puzzle I'm going to talk about is the pentacube. Pentacube is like a pentomino, but it's three-dimensional. So instead of being made up of five squares, it's made up of five cubes. Let's play a game. Kerry and Rocco's top five facts about the Rubik's Cube. Okay, I think I'm gonna really like this game, Rocco. Okay, Kerry, because you're the expert on Rubik's Cubes, you start. Okay. The standard Rubik's Cube has six sides made up of small cubes, and the small cubes come in six colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and white. 
Over 450 million Rubik's Cubes have been sold worldwide. Rubik's Cube competitions are held all around the world to see who can solve one the fastest. At one competition in California, a speed cuber named Max Park solved the standard Rubik's Cube in only 3.13 seconds. Other feats have included solving it blindfolded with one hand and with feet instead of hands. The Rubik's Cube has even been solved underwater, in space, and at the top of Mount Everest. Well, that was fun. Viewers, where should someone solve a Rubik's Cube next? That's a good question, Rocco. What do you think? Well, perhaps in a hot air balloon. It may have been done already, but who knows? Kerry, what about you? Hmm, maybe in a submarine? Viewers, leave your suggestions in the comments section. Did you know that July 13th is Rubik Day? It is Erno Rubik's birthday. And on that day, we celebrate Rubik's Cube. Well, I am going to celebrate Rubik's Cube on that day by inviting all my friends who happen to have a Rubik's Cube and see which one of us at least solves one side. And what about you, Carrie? I've only ever been able to solve one side, so I think I might just stay home and find a nice quiet place and see if I can solve two sides of the Rubik's Cube. Thank you for telling us about the Rubik's Cube today, Carrie. Thank you for having me on the show, Rocco. I had so much fun talking to you. Remember, until next time, read a book in any format.